Hello there, Wednesday today, week's getting on. We've just had a shower of rain as you can see, but and we're on our way to the greenhouse. Just thought I'd show you how to layer a clematis. Now this is only a young plant, the wife's just put this in. There's um, a pink and a white one there. We're going to do a bit of the pink one, just layer it into this pot, just to show you how to do it. If you're going to take cuttings off clematis, now if it's just a normal cutting like we normally do in the pot, where we normally cut here on clematis you cut there, you give it the stem because they're an unusual thing, they will root from the stem not from the nodes but, and then you just take the top bit off so you just put that all in but you can also do it by layering which we're going to do today which I'll just show you how to do it. So what we do just going to put that in like that. I've got a couple of stainless steel pins, just hold it up. Just simple. Just cover that up. And then a little bit of terracotta on top, just to keep the top moist. In a few weeks that'll root, and we just cut it away from the main plant, put a stick in it, and off we go again with another clematis. But right, we'll go round to the greenhouse now and look for some veg. Right, we're outside the greenhouse now. If you can remember when we planted these boxes up, a lot of the crops now are ready. We've been harvesting them. We've had loads of peas off them, about three boilings, but there was only a very short line. It was to show you that it can be done rather than quantities. Now, today I've harvested the broad beans. I'll show you those in a moment. And I'm going to take a cabbage and a cauliflower out so we'll get on and we'll show you what we get. There's the cabbage, that's the one we're going to cut. There you are, look. that's a nice cabbage. You can take some of these leaves off to make it more presentable. There you are. That from the box is not a bad bit of produce. Obviously the courgette will get more room now. No disease or anything on it, lovely and clean. Let's have a look at this collie. Now we have, if you can remember, we have tied this collie to keep it clean. I have been peeping through the hole there to see if it's all right, it is. So we'll cut it. And now as with all collies, we'll take the leaves off for you so you can see it. And there you are. Right, as you can see, broad beans, they were all out of the box. A couple of courgettes, small ones that I've cut off this morning. There you can see cabbage and the cauliflower at the back. That cauliflower is nice and white, no purpling, so that's a good sign. The boxes that had the kohlrabi, used it in cold store, very, very nice. Made lovely big plants. It's now been returned down to lettuce. Put the mesh over it just keep out the wind a little bit and the birds off this one had the peas in which are now gone the pea frame is there supporting the onions to dry them off and so they'll come on nicely carrots are coming up nicely we'll see how we go with those should make decent carrots so, uh, inside the greenhouse it's nice and warm in here today as you can see this side, I've stopped most of the tomatoes now. The, I was going to let them run a little bit longer and bend them over, but it's such a bad year for daylight. So I've stopped them off, except for this one, which I'll show you how, how I do it on there. The other thing that I do, it, I top the pots up. I just use compost, there's no feed or anything in it. And I just top off the pots. I just keep the pots topped up a little bit. You do get a bit of root near the surface and that just helps it a little bit. So that's, as you can see, they're, they're ripening, they're coming through now. I'm sure it's because the uh, we took some of the foliage off. Now, I think we've got, uh, 
we've definitely got something eating them now. I think it's flea beetle at night. I'm going to have to come in late at night with a torch and spray them with a bit of soap, but it doesn't seem to, this one's really bad luck. So I really do need to get in here and have a look what's, I'm, sh I'm sure that's flea beetle, I'm not, I'll have to have a look. What they normally say in the old guys used to say, five trusses is enough for a tomato plant. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, we'll have six and we'll stop on the seventh. Usually the seventh won't make it. So we're stopping on six, but we're going just above the seventh. It's as simple as, as this. Look, you go where the truss is and then I like to go one, one set of leaves above and just take off. There's, uh, there are more trusses, but if you let those come, they're just going to pull the top down altogether. Keep up the feeding. I do, on these cooler days, shut the doors a little bit at night. Very difficult to get them to ripen this year, but we are getting there. Different varieties are doing better. The one that seems to be ripening the best is the yellow one. I'm a bit surprised, the small yellow. So now you've stopped your tomatoes, what you'll find is they'll try to put a side shoot out. There's a lot of power coming from the bottom. So watch out for side shoots once you stop them. They seem to come from anywhere. You might even find some. I'm looking around desperately trying to find one, but there isn't one to show you yet. But at the end of a truss, where the, if I could just show you here, at the end of a truss, you'll find that once you stop them, and sometimes before you stop them, you'll get leaves forming on the trusses. The best thing to do is just go around and nip those off. I don't know, see the striped tomatoes over there doing very well. Tiger stripes, I think they was called. I just thought I'd show you this one while I was here. This is a green tomato. It's not making a lot of tomatoes, but we'll see. It might be a bit different to put on the table. We'll see how we go with that. Hello. Just got a little bit of a climbing rose. It's actually climbing in the hedge or rambling through the hedge. It's quite a pretty rose. It's red, very, very nice head on it and it's scented. So time of year, I'll show you what to do to make some more so we just cut it below that node up take that off take that off make it nice so it fits that off off so here you are and if you pop that into a glass of water and leave it on your windowsill It'll root in a few weeks. In fact, we could do two here, look, and then you can see them both root, yeah? It's a little bit on the softwood, but it'll be all right. And there, leave that one. Uh, let's go there, look. There you are, pop those in. In a few weeks on your windowsill, they'll root. We'll even do this, look. So there's three attempts there for it. I'll pop these in, in the shed and leave, leave them for a few weeks and we'll show, show you the root. The root very easily in water. That is the climbing and rambling rose, not your hybrid teas. That'll be fine, but I'll just pop them in the shed. So that's the, the rose. I've just popped it on the sill in the shed. You could put it on a windowsill, not too much sun though, just a little bit. While we're here, we'll have a quick look at the cuttings we took. There you are, fuchsias are all the way. That's the Mexican orange blossom, choice of tonata there, coming nicely. Let's have a look at the next one. The potent tillers, coming all right. Choice here, they got five failed on that one, but that's the way it is. These, I don't want to open the bag, but they look all right. They're, they're green anyway. If not this one, oh yes, the uh, blue lavender is doing well, and the rosemary is doing fine. These are really taking off. Oh, I remember when we took these, they only had two little tiny buds at the bottom. Now this is the 
this is the tray that we did on the table in the courtyard this is failed look I do believe that was the the bridal wreath for Duca a Duta so that's failed but never mind the others seem to be fine rosemary certainly taken the lavender certainly taken that seems all right so we'll just leave them a little longer no rush we'll keep them covered and if you notice I've got them under the grape canopy just to keep the the high bright sun off them if it does get really sunny I put a fleece over the top this tray that was the Escalonia I'm afraid it went down so we'll redo that but the fuchsias are fuchsias are, uh, and that choice is doing rather well they're actually putting on growth so they'll be fine leave them for a bit don't be in a hurry to get them out while we're down here you know that we've had a cracking crop of strawberries this year so what I'm doing I'm putting some into these troughs and I'm going to put these in the greenhouse before we put the tomato crops in as if we haven't got enough stuff in the greenhouse we're going to put some more in so these will be cropping very very early if you want to grow strawberries this is the way to do it get some good troughs we actually found these in the back of the shed they're not ours they was here when when we moved in now the plants to use are plants that have carried fruit if we haven't got fruit on it be two years before the fruit so I've left these on to show you that all the ones we've potted on we've all got fruit and I'll just show you one these are the sort of plants I've used in the troughs now these are last year's runners that we potted on the lines on the strawberry lines I'll be showing you how to do this soon as the runners start to come off the strawberries another little job that wants doing this time of year now ready for next month or the end of this month when we have to put them in now last year we had some daffodils where we didn't really want the daffodils so we lifted them and we've left them down the garden in a pile for it to dry out a bit and now it's time to get them ready for planting just clean them up look and split them if you want or leave them in clumps to come it's a job that needs doing now because we need to plant them if you can see look some are actually putting a bit of fresh root on so that we'll get these in the ground in the next week or so if you have to move them or if you're planting new bulbs as soon as you see them in the shops get them and get ready to get them in and if you need to move any bulbs do it now don't leave it till the showing clean those into the bucket and then go and plant them just going past the grapevine we have got a few grapes coming on them if they make anything it'll be a bonus the ones that are actually showing little tiny grapes will be grapes there you see don't expect that to make much every day or every other day we're still having to take the runners off there it's growing so well so strong this week we've been harvesting a lot of the crops a lot of mainly fruit this week if i can just go briefly through it most of them are gone for jams and preserves raspberries black currants red currants white currants and have you know the strawberries plenty of strawberries started picking the gooseberries now we've done one bush we've still got three more bushes to do right uh, here's the latest pick from the fruit garden we've got some lovely white currants very nice black currants very juicy and some gooseberries they'll go for pies and preserves puddings for the winter it's been a very good crop this year so we're very lucky to get what we've got on the vegetable side we've also done broad beans but we didn't film that because my wife was sneezing so bad with the pollen we we just couldn't do it but i did show you what we've got hello everyone i've just picked and potted the broad beans 
these are the beans now they'll go for blanching and then they'll be frozen down ready for the winter uh, the other thing is the cherries are colouring up nicely now they're going to a dark red we'll be picking those soon the onion crop left them on the soil to get some sunshine to ripen them a little bit and then if there's rain due we'll bring them in shed get those dried and then I'll show you how to tie them up in bunches this is the potatoes are coming through nicely they've still got soft skin so I can't lift the whole early crop yet as soon as the skins go hard I'll lift the whole lot the courgettes every day we're picking courgettes peas we'll be picking those Saturday but we'll film that anyway beans they're coming up nicely nowhere near ready yet but we're fine with that my poor wife is just about keeping up with the processing of all this fruit and veg and getting it all frozen down the other thing is the cauliflowers are coming through very well now so we'll be taking those we'll freeze those probably so that's all for now it's a beautiful day i'll get on with some of my jobs hello everyone friday today bit overcast today you know. i've just finished cleaning the chickens out that's why we're filming in here i thought i'd just show you what to do show you the the chicken pen um as i built it myself so we got this platform and then we got the roosters three lots of roosting they're quite big chickens so they need some good strong roosting uh, i clean it out every day i put a glove on and clean it out and then once a week i clean the lot out now there's a box for each chicken there but like the chickens as they are they all like to use that one four boxes there for them so they've got one each they all like to use the end one over there and they'll queue up and wait to lay in that one at night i just put this flat down and there's a door for them and in in the summer i just close the outer gate and let them stay in the pen but in the winter i lock them in there so they're a little bit warmer but that's uh, that's the chicken pen i don't know where they're all out there at the moment now they are orpingtons big chickens but they're they're friendly old souls uh. right so as we say it's friday again we've had a week of harvesting fruit this week we've put a lot of fruit in the freezer this week and we made a lot of jam the onions I've now lifted, I left them on top. The only hot day we've had this year, my onions were sunbathing, so I'm pleased with that. It could have done with about a week, but they're not gonna get it. It's gonna to rain today, so I've put them in the shed to dry them out and then get them strung up. I have left one, three rows that went in late, so we'll do those maybe in a week or so. The strawberries should be coming to an end this week, Friday. Uh, that'll be it for this week and hopefully we'll see you next week then.